today we are going to talk about uh, watercolor techniques used in botanical art, specifically how to paint flower stems. And this is a sort of a minor subject that's often overlooked in art lessons, but it's actually quite important because it can make quite a big difference in terms of how realistic your final painting looks. So I'm going to do a quick demo and we're going to explore different types of flower stems that you may encounter as you're trying different subjects. We will talk about two key very important things that you need to consider and I will give you three simple rules that you can apply in your work in order to make it more realistic. Finally, I will show you uh, several examples of my own work where you can see how I apply these rules. Just for fun, I'll show you an example of my really early, early work where I didn't consider those things and you'll sort of see the difference and see if you can spot all the mistakes I made. And I wanted to uh, say a big thank you to one of my followers, Joanna, who raised this question a few weeks ago and I thought this is definitely worth exploring in a separate video. But she's actually one of my Skillshare students and is absolutely amazing and so talented. So thank you, Joanna, for this excellent question and I thought it was worth exploring in a separate video. Now let's take it to the table and get started and I will also show you a ton of examples most of these uh, photos are mine and you can download using the links below in the video description. Before we talk about different flower stems and how to paint them, let's start with a very basic technique overview. So painting a flower stem is similar to how you would paint any cylindrical shape. You need to identify your source of light. Typically we get some sun shining from the top down like this and one side of your cylinder or your stem would be more illuminated than the other. Once you know where the light is coming from, you can roughly split the cylinder into three sections. And I say roughly because obviously there are nuances within that and we'll talk about it in a minute. But roughly we have our base tone and then the section on the right would be the lightest, the section in the middle would be the darkest and the back of the shape facing away from the light would be slightly darker than the highlighted part but lighter than the middle section. And the reason for that is that we get some light bouncing back from other objects illuminating the back of the cylinder. So how does this translate into watercolor? The same principles apply, we just have to build the volume with some variation of green and maybe some other pigments. So on the first layer, I would cover the entire stem with my underpainting pigment, let's say some very warm, almost golden green, adding a bit more water on the right where the sunlight hits the stem. And then add my cooler shadow green there in the middle, wet on wet. This is the darkest part. So I'm gonna let this layer dry and then follow by the second layer of color with a very dark green, perlin green, and maybe even violet for the middle. This is our darkest section. Then maybe a warm, lighter green for the back of the stem where we get the bounce back light. And really no color on the highlight section. I will even try to lift some with my brush just to make sure that that highlight section stands out. You can, depending on how detailed you want this to go, add another layer of color. Again, following the same logic, your darkest pigments are in the middle. Blend them towards the highlight with a wet brush, clear water, and some warmer green on the back. Now this is a very basic technique and when you have some complex shadows and colorful petals, there are some other tips that can help you make this look even more realistic. So let's talk about those. So a couple of things to consider as you're looking at your flower subject and you're thinking about how to paint the stem and what is the best way to put down your color so that your painting is sort of harmonious and uh, more realistic. Number one is the type of connection your stem has to the flower. So typically there are two types that you will see. 
One would be a very clear-cut separation between the petals and the color of the petals and the stem itself, just like you can see in this reference photo. The second case would be where the pigments of your stem will softly blend into the flower itself. So as you can see in this lily, green sort of blends into uh, yellow and orange color. Um, you see a lot of this in flowers like color lilies, the pink ones where the pink leaf actually blends into the green stem. And you would paint them together, wet on wet, blending from one pigment to another, or you will paint them separately, but again blending your greens into the petals or blending the petal color into the greens. Now again, this is not an exhaustive list, but two of the most typical cases. So a hard edge in between two pigments and more of a flow where you can see green blending into the petal colors or the petal colors blending into the green depending on the flower. The second thing to consider when painting the stems is uh, the type of light you have. So when you have very bright sunlight, it will typically give you a very hard shadow. So your stem will have a very defined shadow and the shadow edge right below the petals. And if you have um, a reference photo or you're painting a plein air on a cloudy day where the sunlight is sort of diffused, you will get a much softer blend and you will do that wet on wet from top down, as you can see here. Essentially, uh, your stem will be much darker right underneath the petals and then slowly transition to lighter colors towards the bottom. A couple of rules of thumb that will help you as you're trying to determine how to paint your flower stems. So number one, when you have a flower sort of facing straight up, your stem right underneath the petals will be a lot darker because the petals, uh, the flower itself, are casting the shadow and you will have much more saturated, darker pigments on top of the stem, getting lighter towards the bottom. Now, an exception to this rule, of course, will be flowers that are facing down and you see the stem sort of uh, illuminated by sunlight from the top. Here's how I would modify my basic technique that we talked about in the beginning of the video to paint this type of stem. So again, the three layers of watercolor, just like I showed you in the demo. But now I will be following the direction of the stem, keeping my highlighted areas concentrated on top. And I will keep the bottom much darker and more saturated. And of course, just like we discussed in the original basic demo, the middle section of the stem, whether it's on top or at the bottom, it will be the darkest compared to the sections surrounding it. The second case, the second rule is when you're painting on a dark background and your background is uh, sort of similar in terms of uh, hue to your stem color, so like a green stem on the green background, it's a lot easier to keep your stem lighter. In most cases, it might even be lighter than the saturation of your petal pigments. And that is simply because you want it to kind of pop against the background. So for example, in the case of these orchids, I painted the background first. I know exactly how dark I want it to be because I was trying to measure my saturation of the background against my flower. And now I'm ready to paint my stem and I know it's gonna be a lot lighter than the background and probably a lot lighter than the flowers themselves. That's not necessarily to say that that is what it looks like in real life, but that is the sort of effect I want to achieve in this painting in order for it to look more harmonious. The third rule I wanted to mention, the trickiest one to implement in your painting, but I promise you it will make a big difference in terms of how realistic your flower looks. And this has to do with the color reflections within your shadows. And let me explain what I mean by that. If you really think about it, all our shadows contain reflections from uh, objects surrounding them and those objects have color. So in this particular case when we're talking about flower stems, oftentimes they contain reflections from the petals. Even when they're not very clearly visible, it's always helpful to add a little bit of your petal color 
directly underneath and the reason for that is because it will make your overall painting look more harmonious. So even when you have, for example, red and green, you may want to drop a little bit of your red into that green directly underneath the petals where the shadows hit, whether it's a hard shadow edge or really a nice and soft blended shadow, it's really helpful to have the color of the petals reflecting within that shadow onto your stem. So in summary, the type of stem and the direction of light plays a big role in how you want to organize your colors. Now, as promised, I wanted to show you a couple of examples uh, of my recent botanical work so you can see how I applied these principles in practice. This is a good example of a flower and a stem where I ended up dropping a lot of the petal color directly into the stem because it's reflected onto the stem. So you'll see the shadow areas and you'll see where I dropped a lot of uh, quinacridone red and magenta directly onto the stem straight into that green wet on wet and that really helps me to mute that green down a bit more and keep it in the background in the shadow uh, while my flowers are really popping. So in this case I have two roses and uh, a very warm sort of uh, hooker's green and sap green um, that I use for the stems and the leaves and you can see I dropped a little bit of my Windsor Red Deep directly into the green so even though I have a clear separation between the green and the red I do have a little bit of red at the base of every stem and that helps me keep the whole composition cohesive so there's no sort of stark contrast between the flowers and the stems. Another example is uh, this apple blossom and you can see the full process in one of my recent YouTube videos if you're interested in seeing sort of how I did that start to finish. But the key point here is um, again, I'm using a lot of warm greens for my leaves and my stems, but I'm also dropping just a little bit of purple and red into my stems near the flowers to keep the overall uh, palette of this, of this painting cohesive and harmonious. So this is an example of a really defined shadow. So you get really good sunlight in this picture and uh, my petals have very defined shadows. So does the stem. There's a heart shadow there and into that shadow I dropped a little bit of uh, quinacridon coral that I used for the base layer of my petals but I'm also using it on the stem. My stem is a lot more saturated than the leaves and uh, it uses that warm coral from the petals blended directly into the green. Now, one of my earlier paintings, and uh, never mind the fish, I used to experiment a lot with different subjects and sort of uh, mix my botanical and uh, animal and fish subjects. But what I wanted to focus on is this fuchsia flower branch and the fact that um, I barely, barely considered the fact that um, the little stems that hold the flowers have other colors other than green. So this is a really bad example and I actually didn't finish this painting I think for a reason. As you can see here my stems are kind of light warm green and they barely have any transitions from the flowers. So you can see sort of here I've added some shadows, no red, um, and uh, especially the ones on top have very little red or pink blended into them. Um, so I would consider this to be not a very successful painting. Um, there's lots of other mistakes, but um, I can sort of spot the ones that are related to the stems and the branch right away. I really, really hate this area right here where you could sort of see the green shadows. They're very harsh overall. 
not a very good start and I'm sure you can see lots of other mistakes here uh, but uh, yeah thanks guys I hope you found this video helpful and uh, if you like this format where I sort of answer your questions more in depth I'm happy to continue and sort of make it a permanent series if you will so um, do leave a comment down below if you like this format if you don't like this format um, I'm Always happy to hear your thoughts and I'll see you next week with more watercolor demos and product reviews. Take care.